Hey guys, Tony here. It's a Monday evening and it's June the 28th. Um, I just had a couple things that I wanted to uh, to bring up. Um, if you haven't accepted Lord Jesus Christ, uh, do it today. Time's running out. There's steps in the description. Um, this is uh, one of the things I wanted to um, to bring up really quick. And I'm um, just really just needing some advice. Um, I had made a community post about this. But I have a um, sister uh, in Christ at work, um, and uh, she's 61, and she's raising her granddaughter, who's like five years old, and just found out that she has um, type 1 diabetes. Now, she's the legal guardian. Um, the parents have issues, and they just, um, they have some issues that are, um, I don't want to get into many details, because, um, you know, this is uh, their personal business, but they just aren't they're really not fit to raise this little girl, especially with these issues. And the question that I have, okay, is 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 concerning um, legal uh, advice, or I should say, um, she's basically she's needing she's needing legal help because she's worried if something happens to her that the child is going to be automatically given over to the parents. I mean, they haven't done anything like abuse or anything, but she's just not going to, um, <clears throat> with, with, they're not going to be able to take care of her with the, with the issues that she, with the little, that the little girl has. And, um, she needs to be with someone basically who, um, my coworker, you know, wants her to be with. She knows, she knows someone that would, be better fit I guess you'd say to raise her and um, it's just it's it, if something would happen to her the little girl would not go to this person and the only way that that could happen is if she was able to adopt her legally but the mother of the child does not like her um, she, I guess she likes her enough for her to raise her but don't like her enough to uh, let her have you know, um, to adopt her. Now, it's not that she would ever keep the child from the parents, you know, not, not let them see her. She just wants her to have a better chance at life, you know, with, with, the, with the issues that she has. And, and the parents are just, um, just not fit to do that. So <clears throat> my question is, does anyone know of any legal help See, I, I remember hearing about some Christian organizations that help people with. Well, I know there's Christian organizations that help people with legal matters, but, but, but the problem is a lot of those places only help when it's concerning, you know, um, abuse issues and things. And this isn't exactly an abuse issue, but it will affect the child's well-being in the long run. And DSS just wants to keep the child with the parents. I mean, that's always been the goal of DSS is to try to keep families together. And that's, that's wonderful in most cases. But this child needs his special needs and needs someone that can, that can take care of her. So I just wondering if there was, if anybody knew of anywhere that she could get, you know, some help from like a Christian group that would be willing to take her case, either pro bono or, or just at least help her, you know, because to get legal help, she's got to have a retainer, and she just can't afford that kind of legal help right now on her, you know, her, her wages. So, anyways, if you got any ideas, guys, please uh, put them in the comments, um, and um, I would greatly appreciate it. I, and you know, she's thinking about maybe starting a uh, GoFundMe page to raise the money for legal counseling. That may be the only option we have, but um, I was hoping that maybe we could just you know find some other some other avenue, but. But anyways, uh, moving along, um, I don't know if you guys watched uh, Barry All's new update. <clears throat> Very interesting. Had, um, he's got some, um, he had some interesting points. And it uh, looks like we're still in, you know, high watch season. So, um, you know, stay encouraged, keep watching. You know, there were some things that he said, and I can't remember all of them. But he brought up some things, and, and one of them was Numbers uh, Chapter 7. And uh, which I don't know, it, it struck a chord in me because I, I, I keep thinking about those shofars that I heard in September and November last year. They were both on um, the seventh days. And I know there were 
seventh days on the Gregorian calendar. And I know that don't really mean nothing as far as prophecy is concerned. But I feel like God has been pointing. He's been showing me stuff. Creating kind of a timeline. And I don't know, somehow when he said number seven, I keep thinking, well, what if all these numbers that we're seeing, that we're maybe we're digging in too deep. Maybe we're looking at them too hard. Maybe we're trying to dig somewhere where there's no need to dig. Maybe God is showing us numbers so that we will actually look at his book of numbers. Maybe that's the whole point. Maybe there's something in the book of numbers that is important and dealing with seven. Because um, what's odd here is, okay, just think about this. Barry All's theory, and, and, and this is interesting. His theory, or not just his theory, but from what he's gathered from the Bible, is that this um, Feast of Trumpets... You know, that Feast of Trumpets basically is, is the, the feast that's going to happen right before the tribulation. Because then there's seven days of all, you know, which lead to which leads to atonement. And um, the seven days like represents the tribulation days, seven years, seven and seven. There. And so um, I saw I heard the first show for September the 7th last year, which is on the regular calendars, what are regular the Jews, the regular Jewish calendar. They're showing September 7th this year as being the start of the Feast of Trumpets. I thought that was interesting. But what's really interesting is that I heard uh, um, September and, uh, and November is, not, is the ninth month and the 11th month, 9-11. And on September the 11th this year is when Comet 323 goes back to its original position. And um, if you guys have been following my channel, you know how, how many times 323 could connect with me. With my daughter, with um, with the with the comet 323, with 323 being March 23rd when my brother Jack died, it was 323 was also um, Aaliyah Day in Israel, and it was the day my daughter Aaliyah had her big band day. You know, so there's a lot of good, you know big band day, and, and the 323 in Strong's means a showing forth an inauguration, a procl proclamation. Well, there was an inauguration in Israel that day. My daughter had her band concert, which which was titled um, Show and Tell. So um, that's really interesting that 9-11 and, um, you know, is connected with, with Comet 323. I don't know, it just seems like maybe, and I'm just thinking out loud here, but maybe, um, maybe this is all about, the numbers are all about just getting us to look. And, and, and what's odd is that, you know, when I heard the show far in November, the first, first one in September, I'd only heard three blasts. I heard a long blast, the first blast, but then three, you know, medium blasts. But then the second one, I heard a long blast, and I heard three medium blasts three, three times. So it was three, three, three. And um, three, three, three is is interesting. And you know, I've seen a, a bunch of stuff happen with the with three, three, three. But it means in, in Strong's, it means to observe carefully. So could it just be that God is trying to get us to look at the numbers, the Book of Numbers? And using numbers to remind us of his book of numbers, not necessarily trying to get us to figure out, you know, because, I mean, what, th these numbers can mean anything. They may not mean anything at all. They, 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 I mean, but we all are seeing these repeating numbers, almost like a countdown in one way, because people are seeing 555 and 444 and 333 and 222 and 111 and 1111. It almost seems like a countdown in one way, but in one way, it may just be that God is trying to tell us, look at the book of numbers. And with Barry bringing out those very interesting uh, passages in Numbers, if you watch this video to, from today, you'll see what I'm talking about. And it has everything to do with the rapture. And um, it's very interesting, guys. Um, you know, it could very well be that we are on right, the, still on track for a soon rapture, a soon departure. I already believe it's going to be this year. I mean, you know, if, if, this, year, if this year goes and, and nothing happens, I'm not going to be you know, torn apart or anything. I'm not going to be discouraged, but I just, I really believe that it's this year, you know, and again, if you've been following my channel, you know, there's a lot of things that's happened, um, to me, to, to lead me to believe that it's this year and, you know, everything in the world and everything else. So, you know, this just, um, 2021 with revelation, 2021, the last two verses. And then, you know, Luke 21, there's a lot of 21 connections in the Bible. There's a lot of them. And Barry brings up some too. I mean, it could be that God is just trying to tell us to look, to observe carefully, not only at what's happening, but at the book of Numbers. So, um, 
is something worth looking into. So I believe that we should all be watching and um, spreading the word as, as always, but definitely not time to be discouraged right now. We are, even though the, um, you know, the summer may have began or, or you know, I know on the, our calendar it has begun and, the, you know, the, the uh, what do you call it, the um, solstice is already happening and all, but, you know, this early summer, late spring, early summer theme is played out a lot in the Bible and it always seems to be pointing to um, a departure, a rapture, and escape. So stay encouraged, guys. I mean, um, you know, we've got uh, quite a few dates left that would be high watch dates this year before we even get to the fall, and then we still have the fall as well. But um, it's kind of funny that, you know, we, we think about, when you think about spring, you think about something springing up. And when you think about fall, you think about some fall something coming down. <laughs> and I know that's very simplistic, almost even childlike simplistic, but I mean, that may be how God is, is showing us our departures in the spring and the fall of, of Satan is in the fall. I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> that might be oversimplifying things, but it certainly is uh, something that we should be considering that maybe it's all really, it's really simple if we just... If we stop trying to, um, and I'm not saying don't use the Bible, don't study and, and, and you know, the Bible, you, and try to put pieces together like Dr. Barry's doing, like um, like a lot of our, uh, like a lot of the watchmen are doing. And, and I'm not saying that, I'm, but I'm, what I'm saying as far as all the rest of us, well, all of us really, I mean, just saying we should, maybe we should be, stop trying too hard to dig into these confirmations. I think these confirmations that God's giving us is just, he's reminding us to keep watching, to keep looking, to keep studying, to keep paying attention. Because I think that things are going to start happening really quick now. And, and if we, if we aren't watching, we're going to miss it. And um, I mean, we're going to you know miss the clues is what I'm saying. By watching, we see the clues. We see the confirmations. We see the connections. And, um, you know, I think that's important. It's important to us for encouragement, if nothing else. You know, so um, I think that we should all stay encouraged, encourage one another, keep watching, and just like Dr. Barry said, don't to um, not to uh, don't discourage the don't try to discourage the watchman by telling you know by by keep with these comments that keep saying don't look, don't watch, don't watch. Jesus commands us to watch, so we should be watching. As far as setting dates, I mean. You know, that's neither here or there. You know, I mean, we're looking at appointments. We're, we're trying to find a connection with appointments. Um, that's about it, really as far as we can go, as far as we can look. I mean, if, if Jesus' return is imminent, then it, it doesn't matter. I mean, he, he could come any time. But if he's coming on an appointment, and I believe that he is, then the, the appointment is probably one of God's appointments, seeing as how God always uses... Um, he never, God never changes. I mean, as a matter of fact, Barry said that in his video today. God never changes. So his appointments have always been those appointments. If you if you just read the Bible, you see that all these things have happened. All the things that's happened on Passover. All the things that's happened on Feast of Trumpets. All the things that's happened on, on the Day of Atonement and Pentecost. All these, these feasts and Passover. I think I said it already. But these things, uh, these are the appointments. And God seems to be doing to be working through those appointments and that may be so that the people that are for him that believe in him will be watching those days you know and, and maybe that's why it's important to um to be watching but not just watching randomly but to be watching well we, we should always be watching ready i mean we should always be ready to go at any time but we should be watching these appointments that god has with man it's not just about um the Jewish traditions. It's about God's appointments with us. I mean, with the world. I mean, it even says in Genesis that the sun, the moon, the stars were made for signs and seasons. And, and that was before, that was before he ever mentioned anything about Jewish people. That was when Adam was first created. So these things were created. God created the sun and the moon, the stars for signs and seasons for everyone, for the whole world. He called out the Jewish race much later. So, anyways, guys, stay encouraged. If you haven't said the Lord Jesus Christ, do it today. And um, if you do have any advice, um, please leave it in the comments. I would greatly appreciate it. I mean, I don't know how I can really help her 
um, other than just, um, you know, if, if she gets a GoFundMe page, I can, I can promote that for her. But, you know, legal help is very expensive. You know, if nothing else, maybe she can raise the money to at least get a retainer and get it started. You know, um, that little girl is her, her whole world. And, um, you know, a type 1 diabetes is not a, a minor thing. It, it requires a lot of attention. And it's just unfortunate that the parents are just not in the state of mind to, uh, to be able to handle that. And um, it's just not going to, would not be a good environment for her. I mean, her parents love her, but they have issues. And, um, you know, all we can do is pray for them and pray for the little girl. And, and, and just, you know, like I said, if you have any advice, it'd be greatly appreciated. But uh, I will see y'all in the next video and have a wonderful evening. I love y'all so much. Good night. Bye.